Prototyping in Figma has been constantly getting better. It has gotten to the point where designers have used it to recreate the basic functions of popular games such as Tic-Tac-Toe, Snake, or Space Invaders, games that will explore in this video. The first game is the classic Tic-Tac-Toe. You have the 3x3 board. While hovering over a tile, the two options are displayed. Once you choose one, the option is animated to cover the whole tile. To make it work, the players take turns placing their symbols. Now let's take a closer look at the design file. The structure is simple. We have the 3x3 board as a frame. Inside we have the neon columns and the nine tiles. The tile is a variant with several options. If we switch to prototype mode, we can see the relationship between each component. While hovering, you get the options, and after clicking one of them, will animate to cover the whole tile. This is a simple, yet great example of what you can do with Figma's prototyping features. Let's move on to the next example. The next game is Flappy Bird. Its mechanics are a little more complicated than the previous example, as it has physics-based movement, collision logic, and a random pipe generator. To make the bird fly, you can either press space or click. As the game progresses and the bird flies through the gaps, the score goes up. The game will register your current and high score only during this session. Once the page is refreshed, the score will reset since Figma can't be connected to a database, at least not yet. The game's mechanics are based on a random generator and a large set of variables. There is also a set of 10 variables for the score. A resizable component for the pipe. Its length changes based on its position. The bird has a looping animation. Each instance changes to the next one after a 100 milliseconds delay. Pokemon Red Figma has an interface identical to the popular game franchise. You can move around with the arrow keys. After arriving on the bridge, you are asked to accept a fight. Once the fight is on, you can explore your bag, available Pokemon, and moves, but you are forced to select a certain attack move. The fight progresses similarly to the game, with nostalgic animations and the Pokemon attacking in turns. Once you win the battle, the game is over. The mechanics behind Pokemon Red Figma are straightforward. It's a prototype connected to a long sequence of frames, variants, and overlays. Its simplicity doesn't take its shine away. This is a great example of what you can do with Figma's basic features. The retro car game is similar to Flappy Bird as it has physics-based movement, collision logic, and a random car generator. The car moves left and right either by clicking the arrows or using the keyboard. The goal is to avoid crashing into the other cars. The cars are randomly generated from a predetermined set. They also move at a different speed. If you crash into one, it's game over. The game will register your current score and the high score only during this session. Now let's take a look under the hood, pun intended. The prototype is minimal. It has a small set of components for the cars, arrows for movement, numbers for the score, and a few icons that as far as I can tell, aren't used. Then we have variables for the car, its movement, the score, detecting collision, and the placement and speed of the cars you must avoid. 
The memory game is a take on the classic flipping cards games. It is built only with components and no variables, which makes it less interactive than the previous games. You flip the cards by clicking on them, however. If they don't match, you have to flip them back yourself, as it doesn't automatically happen. The score doesn't automatically update either. You can keep track of the pairs matched by using the bar above. The upper slider can be used until 10 points, then the lower slider can be used to add up it. The prototype structure isn't much different than what you'd make for your usual UI designs because the only interactive elements are the cards and sliders that change on click. We have the main frame which represents the board and score bar. We have instructions for a script that generates a new pattern for the cards. We have variants with all the symbols which can be easily expanded. Lastly, we have the card components and the slider connected, which represent the animated parts of this game. Snake is another classic game remade in Figma, however. Unlike the previous examples, this is not a prototype, it's a plugin. To control the snake, use the arrow keys or the W, A, S, and D keys. The snake grows each time it's fed. It also moves faster, which makes controlling it a challenge. The game keeps track of your score. But unlike the previous examples, we don't have a high score. Instead, we have a multiplier that helps the player get more points. This is a simple yet relaxing game. Space Invaders is another classic game recreated in Figma. You can move left and right and shoot enemies. The game records your current score and the best score of this session. The enemies shoot at you while moving left, right, or down. You get 15 points for each enemy killed. Other known games have been recreated in Figma, such as Minesweeper, Figma Catan, Figpoli based on Monopoly, and Wordle. If you want to play around with the prototypes, you'll find the links to all the files in the description.